to our series through the book of Job. We are on week seven. Can you believe it? I'm going to give you a quick recap just to catch you up to speed in case you've missed a week or two here or there and just to make sure we're all on the same page for today. So we began by meeting our main man Job and we saw how successful and wealthy Job was. But then we saw how God allowed Satan to take all that away from him in the hopes that maybe Job would then curse God. But we see how through all of it, Job never curses God, but instead continues to worship God no matter what. We see then how Satan goes even further and attacks Job's health and God allows us. And so Satan causes painful sores to come up on Job's body and these were very, very uncomfortable. But we see that even through this, Job never curses God. We do see, however, how he reaches a place of complete rock bottom and he even questions why he was born. And that's a really scary place to get to. Then we saw last week how his friends were not the place of comfort that Job was hoping they would be. And we learned that unlike Job's friends, we need to be children of God who are a place of comfort for those who are hurting. Now today, week seven, we see how Job is crying out and wishing and hoping there was somebody who could defend him, someone who could talk on his behalf and say, listen guys, I don't deserve this. And so we're going to see what happens. But for now, we're going to worship.
wow, what an incredible time of worship. And while we're standing, we're going to go straight into our memory verse for this week. So before we do that, we're going to take a quick moment and recap what it is. It is from Psalm 121 verses 1 to 2 and it says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the master of the heavens and the earth. So are you guys ready? Let's go. When nothing seems to make sense And everything seems wild I put my faith in my God Knowing I'm His child When everything seems crazy And nothing's going right I put my faith in my God Holding on so tight I will trust in guys a question this morning okay who of you out there love to watch movies I love movies I just love it with some popcorn hot chocolate it's just the best now who's ever watched a movie where the bad guys have plotted and schemed against the good guys and made it look like the good guys were the guilty ones like they did the crime has anyone noticed that before in a movie I have and it makes me super frustrated I want to shot at the TV and I told the detectives it wasn't them, it was them, it wasn't, it was those guys, not those guys, hey? Have you ever felt that way? Or, or maybe at school you've seen someone get into trouble, but it wasn't actually their fault, but they were blamed for it because there was some miscommunication or misunderstanding and some poor innocent friend of yours gets put in detention and it wasn't even their fault. Now, here's the thing. When a good person is punished for no good reason, it's often frustrating because you're just thinking, but why? They didn't even do anything. And well, guys, this is exactly how Job felt. You see, he was a good man, a good man of God, a righteous man. He did nothing wrong. He was, in fact, some would say so close to perfect. 
but yet he was being punished in the most awful way. And he is there thinking, why this is so unfair. Hey, son. So what you doing over there? Nothing much. I'm just reading this book for my English class. Well, that's fine. I'm here to tell you that you're being punished. What for? I don't know. I'm just here to punish you. So, I'm being punished for no reason? Yep. I just feel like it today. Well, what is my punishment? Well, take this bag and fill it up with some weeds. Okay, Dad, I'm finished. Well done, son. Now, I need you to clean the toilets. Dad, are you serious? My boy, I wouldn't question me if I were you. Or I'm going to have to add to your punishment. Ah, okay, Dad. That will do, my boy. Come with me to your next punishment. Ah, oh, there's more. But Dad, I didn't do anything wrong. That's not the point. But I don't understand. You don't need to understand. But Dad, I have a whole book report to write on that book that I was reading. Well, that's not my fault. But Dad... Come, let's go. Ah, oh, thanks Dad. Dad, you just messed up my room! Yeah, well, better clean it up. What? What, what have I even done to deserve this? I mean, I, I get good marks at school, and I play first team cricket, and I've never even got detention, not even once. Well, it's not going to clean itself up. Best get started. thing for you today. Dad, I thought I was done. Well, come with me. You see these pallets over here? I need you to move 10 of these to over there. But Dad, some of those are really heavy. Do you think you could help me? No, you'll be fine. I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. My dad is punishing me for absolutely no reason. <laughs> Dude, look, I'm not going to judge you, but there's no ways your dad is punishing you for no reason. No ways. I'm telling you, I didn't do anything. I mean, he's made me weed the garden, clean the toilets with the toothbrush. He made me clean my room that he'd messed up, and now he's got me moving all this rubble. Sheesh! <laughs> you definitely did something wrong, man. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Okay, well, look, I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, I need to go. I just don't get it. Well, looks good. I think you can go back to reading a book now. But first, you need to take a shower. Okay, so after watching that, you're probably thinking, whoa, that was rough and super unfair. Now, this isn't exactly what happened between God and Job, but I'm pretty sure you get somewhat of an idea. And I'm pretty sure in this story, you felt super frustrated for the poor kid, the son in the story, especially when his friend pops over the wall and has his little say. Now, 
With this in mind, let's think about Job. Let's think about how frustrated Job must have felt being punished for things he didn't think he deserved at all. And then to top it off, we have Job's friends who were of no help at all, of no comfort. And they simply, you know, agreed with what was going on and told Job, well, we pretty much think that you deserve what's happening to you. So best you just deal with it and repent. And so we see how Job is left in this place of complete frustration and and we see how he cries out and he says, I wish there was someone who could defend me in a courtroom scenario that someone could tell God that I've done nothing wrong. So it's got me thinking, I wonder what a courtroom scenario would look like with Job and God. Let's take a look at this. All rise. The court is now in session. You may be seated. Today's trial is to determine whether Job is guilty or innocent, or if the punishment he has received has been fair. Job, would you like to make a statement? Thank you, Your Honor. I am a righteous man of God and have done nothing to deserve such punishment. I am innocent. Thank you. I would like to call a few witnesses to the stand. Eli, could you please make your way to the stand? Thank you, Your Honor. You may proceed. I have known Job for many years, and he has always claimed to be a good man of God. But I say to you now, he is a fraud, and he's lied to us all these years. Thank you, Eli. Bill, you may take the stand. Thank you, Your Honor. Bill, is there any track record of Job being a liar or a cheat? Do you have any evidence to show us? Nothing that I can account for in the past, but I can clearly see that he's a liar and that he's being severely punished for not taking God seriously. Thank you, Bill. And lastly, Zoe. Could you please make your way to the witness stand? Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Zoe, you have known Job for a while. What would you say for the fact that he is claiming to be innocent? You know, I'd love to say that I feel sorry for Job, but the thing is, Job needs to take the time to see that he needs to fix whatever it is in his life he needs to fix before making things right with God. Has Job always been the man of God all his life? For as long as I can remember. Actually, the closest thing to perfect if you ask me. I mean, that's at least what he made us believe. But now, I'm not sure. I mean, it is quite impressive how he was able to keep up an act for so long. But the truth always eventually comes out. So if you're asking me, I think, I think he's fully deserving of his punishment and he is guilty. Joel, do you have any last words to say to us before the final verdict? I stay true to my word. My struggle is trying to understand why God has been so unfair to me. I feel like I have held up my side of the agreement and have done my part. I have been a good, godly man and have lived a blessed life. But I feel as though God has not held up His side of the agreement. You know what? This whole thing has just been silly and a waste of time. I thought I had friends who I could count on and who would come to their senses, but I was dead wrong. Thank you. Stop! I've come to defend Job. Jesus, what gives us the privilege of having you in our presence? Job, I have come here to stand before you and God, to take up all your burdens, because I'm the only one who can set you free. Everyone in this room, even the ones throwing the accusations, are deserving the worst punishment. But I am here 
to take up all your souls, all your heartaches, so that you can be set free. What? You had right. Jesus is taking the punishment that you deserve. We all deserve. Setting free. Now go. Live a free life and an innocent one. Jesus, are you serious? Absolutely. Now go. You're free. Wow! Thank you. This is amazing. Jesus is the only one who can redeem us. As it says in Job chapter 19, verse 25, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end, He will stand on this earth. So no matter what comes our way, whether it's good or bad, we can stand firmly on the fact that Jesus is our ultimate Redeemer. He will rule and reign forever. All we need to do is trust in Him. So Job believed that because he lived a righteous life, his whole life would be filled with blessings. But as we've learned, life isn't always fair. So we just need to trust in God's plan. Even if everyone around us is against us, you can trust that Jesus is for us. He is our ultimate defender and witness, and he's so much more. So guys, today has been so intense, but also so good at the same time. And at the end of the day, all we need to know is that Jesus is the ultimate redeemer. No matter what you're going through, no matter what your circumstances, no matter how unfair things may seem around you, all you need to know is that Jesus is the ultimate redeemer and that he will never, ever forget about you and never, never leave you, no matter how hard or tough your situation may be. And in times like this, we just need to do a few simple things, and that is stay close to Jesus. And we do this by reading our Bible, praying, going to church, spending time with fellow Christians and then we will be close to Jesus. So why don't we all stand and look towards Jesus as we go into a time of worship. Jesus, I give you my heart, I give you my life, I give you all of me. Jesus, I give you my song, I give you my voice, I give you all of me. Jesus, you are the greatest, you're mighty and you're strong. I lift my hands in worship and sing of who you are. No other name is higher, no other name is true. We lift our voice and sing it out. God, we look to you. Jesus, Jesus, the name that has power. Jesus. You are the greatest, you're mighty and you're strong I lift my hands in worship and sing of who you are No other name is higher, no other name is true We lift our voice and sing it out God, we look to you Jesus, Jesus, the name that has power Jesus the name that has saved us Jesus, Jesus The name that has power Jesus 
ever given your heart to Jesus and you want to make the big decision today, we are so happy to do a prayer with you if you would just repeat after me. Are you ready? Okay, let's just repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross and paying for my sins. Please forgive all the bad things I do and come live in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's all we have for you today. It has been an intense day, just as Chunky said, but this has definitely been one that shows us just how much Jesus loves us. So next week, if you want the inside scoop, why don't you take a look at Job chapter 16? And we'll see you same time, same place.